Uh, well, money is too tight to mention in most government departments, but maybe not in the Department of Education. The Minister told MLAs that schools will not now face cuts in their budgets next year and some schools will still get an increase. Last year, principals hit out at the proposed changes to the common funding formula, saying some could see their budgets cut by up to £40,000 next year. So how has the Minister managed to come up with a solution that pleases everyone? John O'Dowd, I'm pleased to say, is with me now. Minister, thanks very much for joining us. Um, well, a, a bit of a uh, magic trick, some people might say. First of all, you've had to concede your original plans for the common funding formula were unworkable. No, well, I haven't conceded that. I, I still believe that the principle of tackling educational underachievement as it is aligned to social deprivation remain. Uh, I was clear throughout the consultation process that the, the figures given to schools were indicative and did not include the £15.8 million, pounds which was to be added to school budgets. There are several different ways you can add that £15.8 million. For instance, this year we have 3,000 more children in primary school than we had the previous year. We'll have 1,700 less children at post-primary school. I'm proposing that we have a split pot. We have one pot for primary and nursery school. We have one pot for primary schools. And how we divide that £15.8 million up among those pots is key as to how we move forward. But the target of tackling social deprivation and education remains. OK, but the £15.8 million pounds is not the contingency fund that you're specifically using for this. That's a separate amount of money. So we shouldn't confuse the two. No, we shouldn't confuse the two. Uh, and the £15.8 million so Where did the money from the contingency come from? Well, that's, as I understand it, several hundred thousand pounds specifically to bail you out from the mess you got yourself into over the common funding formula. Well, while others were running around losing their heads, I wasn't. I knew all along that I had the £15.8 million pound selling. I knew all along it was going to be added to the pot. When we do that in several different ways, and I have yet to make up my mind what final formula we will end up with, we have, we have a minus of around £300,000 to £500,000. Pounds. Right. And a universal budget that I have in the Department of Education of £2 billion. If I can't find £500,000, then I really shouldn't be in the post in the first place. But is that a temporary stay of execution for these schools? I mean, are they, you've, you've got this contingency fund of however much it takes, you say, £300,000, £350,000. What happens next year? Do you have to well, find another in, contingency fund? We're into fund? a new budgetary period next year, uh, despite anything I would have done in relation to the common funding formula. I will be going in negotiating with my executive colleagues very strongly for an enhanced education budget. And indeed, during this budgetary period, we did secure £130 million extra uh, from the executive. But even starting back when we started this budgetary period, the Department of Education is still down £170 million from where we were three to four years ago. So my executive colleagues and other political parties have been out speaking very strongly that education is important. When it comes to negotiations around the budget, they'll have to prove that. OK, you asked for feedback on your proposals. There were 15,000 responses to the proposed changes. 77% of respondents opposed the use of free school meals to determine which schools get more money. 600 schools believed they'd face budget cuts of up to £30,000. So it was a problem. People told you it was a problem, and you've now had to change tack. Well, that's what consultations are about. But th this has so been... You, this so you, so you, yeah, OK, so you've, so you've accepted the consultation. You've taken it on board. You also have to accept, be honest, you also have to accept you did didn't get it right first time round. You've had to change your plan. Well, I was always intent on changing my plan, or else I should never have gone out to consultation in the first place. I welcome the fact that 15,000 people responded to this consultation. This has been a very, very good debate. It has been a very open, democratic process we've been involved in through along. But in terms of the consultation responses, for instance, one school of 400 issued 2,000 responses, perfectly entitled to do so, but it has to be put in that context. Around 4,000 of, of those responses are lobby letters, again, perfectly entitled to lodge them, but you have to put them in that context. I will go through the consultation responses on the basis, is there alternatives offered to free school meals entitlement? None has been proposed to date. Free school meals entitlement is a robust measure. The Public Accounts Committee of the Assembly tells me it's a robust measure. Sir Bob Sealsbury, who carried out the initial uh, review, tells me it's a robust matter. And the OECD tell me it's a robust measure of social deprivation. So uh, I just want to be clear, because I think this is something that the committee raised with you. Is this a stay of execution for these schools for a 12-month period? And can they expect cuts to their budgets the following year? Or are you saying you will always be able to find the excess money that is necessary to make sure that schools don't actually face real cuts? Well, sc schools' budgets depend on a number of factors. They depend on how I set the budget, obviously, but mm. it also depends on the number of pupils they take in every year because the money's allowed to the number of pupils. If a school loses pupils, then there's nothing I can do about that. But I, I am committed in this financial year to support the schools who may have been losing money as a result of the changes I'm making. I, I'm committing to those schools that I will go into negotiations with my executive colleagues around the budget and I will fight very, very hard 
to improve and increase the education budget currently from where it sits. So I would like to see all schools' budgets rise in the future. Yeah, of, of course you would, and I'm sure most schools mm. would want to see the mm. same thing. And a lot of people would say it's very laudable that the Minister wants to target schools with particular mm. deprivation issues and, 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 and mm. social need issues. You were prepared to sacrifice schools that you saw as well off, more uh, socially advantaged, um, to be able to transfer the money to the schools in particular need. But you've now agreed that that's not a good idea. You're not going down that road anymore. No, 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 no. I haven't said that. I haven't said that. But that's that what's happening. That is, that is de facto it's not, it's what's, what's happening. happening. Those schools with high free school meal intakes will continue and will see a, rise, a significant rise in their budgets as a result of the changes I've made. That's not because it's laudable. If we go back to the health debate, the Royal Victoria Hospital faces significant pressures. So are we suggesting then that we shouldn't target resources to the Royal Victoria Hospital? We have schools out there who are facing significant pressures because of the socio-economic intake they're bringing in. That's where we need to target resources. If we're going to give those young people a chance in life, if we're going to make sure those young people yeah. contribute to our society and bring economic benefits but to our society, But the charge against to you that you were robbing Peter to pay Paul. Where else would I have got the money? I have to but, you've got, but here's the point. You've got the money from somewhere else. You've just told me you've got a huge budget. You were able to find the money without any difficulty. No, no, no. Why did you not think of that before you put the schools that thought they were going to lose out through the trauma that they've been through. Well, I have throughout this debate... That's exactly I, what's happened. I have debated this issue with you several times. You have. The and you've now changed your position. No, well, because you sat in that seat before and you told me, basically, tough, this is what's happening, and I can't do anything about it. You're now sitting here today telling me I was always going to be able to do something about it. People weren't listening. You've changed no, no, your well, policy. Perhaps you weren't listening. I'm not suggesting your viewers <laughs> weren't listening. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be so arrogant <laughs> to suggest that. But the fact of the matter is this. I've always sat here and I've said to you, there's £15.8 million pound to be included in the pot. It's how I divide that £15.8 million up is the important thing. Schools with high free school mill intakes is going to receive additional funding because that's where resources are needed. That's where the significant problems in our education system exist. And I believe it is the right thing to do because all right. the evidence tells me it's the right thing to do. So was this all a great fuss about nothing? There was never no, sir, an issue. This has been a very, very good debate. Right. A very, very it's been good a very debate. worrying <coughs> debate though for the principals and the teachers and the parents I involved in the schools that, that thought they were going to lose out. I accept that. But if we are going to move forward as a society, this is the sort of bread and butter debates we need to be having in our political system. Okay. Quite rightly, politicians are often criticised for not dealing with the bread and butter issues. This is quite literally a bread and butter issue. Okay, uh, Minister, uh, we appreciate you coming in. Thanks okay. very much.